Welcome to The Scientist Speaks, a podcast produced by the Scientist Creative Services team. Our podcast is by scientists and for scientists. Once a month, we bring you the stories behind newsworthy molecular biology research. This episode is brought to you by Methler Toledo, a leading global manufacturer of precision balances and analytical instruments for use in laboratories and manufacturing. As humans age, cells often acquire defects that lead to cancer. However, this fate may not be set in stone as certain animals can circumvent the ravages of time and keep their cells healthy. In this episode, Nikki Spahic from the Scientist Creative Services team spoke with Vera Gorbonova, Professor of Biology and Medicine at the University of Rochester and co-director of the Rochester Aging Research Center to learn about her research on naked and blind mole rat cancer resistance. Burrowing in the dark depths of the earth are unusual critters that may hold the secrets to health and longevity. Mole rats are neither moles nor rats, but long-lived subterranean rodents that never seem to develop cancer. Naked mole rats are mouse-sized animals with short legs, long teeth, and little hair. They are native to eastern Africa and, with lifespans that exceed 30 years, are the longest-lived rodents. To thrive in their harsh, underground habitats, these mammals evolved unusual physiological and behavioral traits. For example, they are the only mammals who regulate their body temperature similarly to cold-blooded animals. They rely on environmental heat sources to stay warm, and their hemoglobin has a high affinity for oxygen to deal with limited oxygen availability in their underground burrows. Their habitat imparts other unique features, some of which Vera Gorbanova studies to understand cellular mechanisms related to aging and cancer resistance. Through her research, she hopes to learn their secrets to a long life. I felt that aging and especially molecular mechanisms of it is such a fascinating topic. It's also the biggest problem of modern medicine because there are more and more old people and we have to find out how to keep them healthy. It affects every person. It was so clear for me. I want to study aging. And the cancer came as a part of aging. It's an age-related disease. It's one of three major causes of death. There is this opportunity by addressing aging to find ways to delay or prevent altogether cancer. Genomic instability is an important driver of aging, as accumulating DNA damage over time leads to inflammation, tissue dysfunction, cell death, and cellular senescence, the halting of cell division. DNA damage also contributes to cancer by activating cancer-promoting genes and blocking tumor suppressors resulting in extreme cell proliferation. In this case, cells can use cell senescence and death mechanisms as a strategy to stop uncontrolled growth. Mole rats provide Gorbanova an unconventional but advantageous model to examine both of these phenomena in the laboratory. Scientists tend to explore biology using tried-and-true animal models, such as mice. But the majority of lab mice develop cancer after a couple years. There are only five recorded cases of naked mole rats developing cancer, and naked mole rats live 10 times longer than the typical lab mouse. In some respects, mole rats are more similar to humans. Especially genes involved in cancer control are more similar to humans. Comparing mouse to naked mole rat as a model for biomedical research, they're both good models, but they serve very different purposes. Because mouse is a model of disease. And naked mole rat is a model of health. And so if you want to model disease, test different drugs and see if they help cure disease. So mouse would be very convenient because they develop cancer much more easily than people. Most of their maintenance mechanisms are actually much less efficient than in humans. It's very easy to make them sick. Humans are much more resilient. So for disease modeling, mouse is very good. But then we ultimately want to prevent disease. So we want to learn what can we do to not let people get cancer. We need very different models. Here, mice cannot help us at all. We need to look at species that naturally evolved to be resistant to disease, and then we can learn how we can do it in the clinic. Animals residing in high-risk environments, like open fields teeming with hidden predators, have no evolutionary reason to develop longevity. Long-lived mammals, like the naked mole rat, tend to live in relatively safe environments, where they're not worried about fighting for survival. 
Instead, they've evolved numerous mechanisms that contribute to cellular health, which fosters their longevity. For example, they have more efficient DNA repair, a more stable epigenome, and more accurate protein synthesis. To look closely at the mole rat's unique cellular mechanisms, Gorbanova takes tissue biopsies, cultures the cells, and assesses their behaviors as they grow. When normal tissue cells are grown in a petri dish, they proliferate across the plastic floor until they get close to their neighbors, at which point they stop dividing. This phenomenon is called contact inhibition. Cancer cells, in contrast, they lose this control. Even though like it's tight, they will still start dividing, and that's what forms a tumor and then presses on surrounding tissue. Human cells or mouse cells, if they are normal, non-cancerous cells, you seed them on a plate. And they divide just to form a thin layer of cells on the bottom. But for naked mole rat cells, they stop even before that. We call this hypersensitivity to contact inhibition. They just barely touch each other, and that's enough for them to stop. At first, Gorbanova did not know what caused this early contact inhibition. But she noticed that after growing naked mole rat fibroblast cells for a few days in culture, the medium became viscous. Gorbanova and her team found that this viscosity was due to a sticky component called hyaluronic acid, or hyaluronin, a compound that promotes skin elasticity, which may be important for these mammals when burrowing in narrow tunnels. In contrast to human or mouse hyaluronic acid, the naked mole rat's version has an extremely high molecular weight, presumably due to lower activity of an enzyme that degrades the compound. When Gorbanova removed the mole rat's hyaluronic acid by knocking down its synthase gene or overexpressing the degrading enzyme, their cells acquired cancerous properties and lost their early contact inhibition. These cells also formed tumors when injected into mice. If we remove hyaluronic acid, then cells resume division because they feel now there is a space we have to fill it. So we stimulate more proliferation. The hyaluronic acid signals through a receptor called CD44. From that receptor, it can then trigger cell cycle arrest. We are currently studying strategies to increase the level of hyaluronin in tissues if we take gene from naked mora that makes hyaluronin and put it in the mouse, the incidence of cancer is reduced. They also longer lived. It helps with other age-related issues such as inflammation. We are looking for ways to develop small molecules that will inhibit degradation of hyaluronin. And this way we can naturally increase the level of hyaluronin in tissues. In addition to naked mole rats, Gorbanov explores aging and cancer resistance in blind mole rats. Native to Western and Central Asia and Eastern Europe, these rodents are furry and, as their name suggests, blind, with tiny eyes covered with skin. While naked and blind mole rats are both long-lived and resistant to cancer, they're about as closely related as mice and guinea pigs. They are very different. They evolved their subterranean lifestyle independently of each other, what's called convergent evolution. So it's somewhere a rodent decided to live underground in Africa, and maybe around the same time, a completely different rodent decided to live underground in the Middle East. They're from very different parts of the world. But because their environment was similar, some of the features became similar between these two species. When we found hyaluronic acid, we decided, okay, let's test if blind mole rats have the same mechanism. And when we started culturing blind mole rat cells, we also saw that they make hyaluronin. But then hyaluronin in the blind mole rat cells didn't trigger the same contact inhibition. So part of this system evolved in the same way. They both upregulated hyaluronin production, but in the blind mole rat, we don't see it being employed in the same way for cancer resistance. Then we asked, what do blind mole rats do to avoid cancer? Gorbanova and her team noticed that cultured blind mole rat cells behaved in an unexpected way. They would divide a few times and then all die, something she had never seen with cells from other species. This massive die-off did not seem to be due to any particular culture condition. She termed the phenomenon concerted cell death, and the seemingly coordinated behavior of the cells made her think that a secreted cellular factor may induce cell death. The researchers found that the cells were releasing the inflammatory molecule interferon. Gorbanova was familiar with this molecule from her aging research and knew that one of the things that triggered its release was transposon activation. 
We've been studying transposable elements for some time in humans and in mice. Uh, and the transposable elements, so-called junk DNA, makes up about 50% of our genome. And usually they're kept quiet because our cells do not want to let these parasites be too active. But when we get older, this silencing starts to fail gradually. As a result, transposons become activated. They start to be expressed and they start to move around. They come into the cytoplasm and trigger innate immune response. That is actually a detrimental factor in aging because that can trigger various types of inflammation. So we, we looked at the transposons in the blind mora that indeed we saw that when we put the cells in culture and we force them to proliferate, then transposons get activated and they trigger the same interferon-mediated response, and that's what kills the cells. So in this system, the transposons are not just the parasites that make a problem, but cells learned how to put them to good use. Transposons serve uh, as a gauge to just the health of the cell. If a cell became unhealthy, transposons got very active, and then it triggers cell death. To avoid transposons jumping around the genome, most mammals have evolved mechanisms to block transposon activation. One of these is DNA methylation. After replication, DNA methyltransferase scans the new genome and adds methyl groups where necessary. Gorbanova found that blind mole rats had lower levels of this enzyme, enough to function sufficiently in normal cells, but not enough to keep up with quickly proliferating, potentially precancerous cells. These cells then lose their methylation, which triggers transposon activation and cellular suicide. To treat certain leukemias, clinicians prescribe the chemotherapeutic 5-azacytidine, or 5-aza, which activates transposons by blocking methylation, although the drug's mechanism was a mystery until recently. When Gorbanova and her team treated mice with 5-aza, they developed fewer papillomas, benign tumors at the epithelial surface. This phenotype was dependent on transposon activation. Additionally, they found that knocking down DNA methyltransferase in human cancer cells triggered a similar cell death response as in proliferating blind mole rat cells. These results suggest that activating transposons in rapidly proliferating cells could be an effective anti-cancer mechanism. In addition to her mole rat work, Gorbanova continues to explore unique mechanisms of aging and cancer resistance in other long-lived animals. By studying the exceptional, she hopes to learn their secrets and apply them to improve human health. We have a lot of interesting stories in the pipeline. We are working on understanding cancer resistance and longevity of the bowhead whale. This is the longest-lived animal. Bats are fascinating there. Very long lives for their size. There are bat species that live 40 plus years and they're very tiny. We also study gray squirrel, which can live more than 20 years. Surprise, surprise. Thinking about citing problems, your life really becomes fulfilled by that. This is the most exciting profession because you learn about unknown. Thank you for listening to The Scientist Speaks. This episode was produced by the Creative Services team for The Scientist and narrated by Nikki Spahic. And thank you to Methler Toledo for sponsoring this episode. Please join us for our next episode as we learn about what stem cell research can teach us about aging. To keep up to date with this podcast, follow The Scientist on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.